Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Airsoft and Shooting Sports. Taking a look from the Shooting Sports side of things at another Firearm Friday build. Haven't done a Firearm Friday video in quite some time, so this is long overdue. But this is the latest addition to my firearm stable. You guys may recall that I have kind of a soft spot for those Hatfield $99 uh, break action 12 gauge shotguns. You may recall this guy, which is one of my most popular firearm builds that I've ever put on video. This is my folding backpack shotgun. Well, I decided to build another one. This one obviously is a little bit of a different plan than that one. Again, this started as a simple, humble $99 Hatfield 12 gauge with a 28 inch barrel and a normal stock. A stock identical to this. This is a spare that I got from Hatfield because I'm gonna be doing some work to this one too. This guy's gonna be modular. So, what I did is I looked at my Hatfield, my uh, backpack shotgun, and I looked at my Mossberg 500 that I built, the one that has the uh, shockwave bird's head grip, uh, Magpul furniture, and things like that, and I said, I like this aesthetic, but let's do it a little classier, a little old-fashioned. However, obviously, you can't go down chopping your barrel 14 inches on something like that, on, like this, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, this is a shotgun. This wasn't a firearm. This had a shoulder stock applied to it and was transferred as a shotgun. Therefore, I cannot bring the barrel shorter than 18 inches without filing a Form 1 and doing it all proper through the ATF with a tax stamp. Um, the other issue with that is I can't cut this barrel shorter than 19 inches anyways with this grip because then it would bring it shorter than 26 inches and would again make it a short barrel shotgun anyways. So what I have here is cut down to 19 inch barrel, which gives me a 26 and a half inch overall length, which is perfectly cool across the board, no issues whatsoever with this, federally, obviously state rules may vary. The grip is a standard stock that I cut down, I shaped it on a belt sander, and then I shaped it by hand, and I shaped it in a way so that I could still keep the checkering on there, and it just aesthetically looks great. It still has an open hole in the bottom, but I built a plug for it. Um, I'm just still tweaking this thing, and once this thing gets installed, it's gonna be pretty tricky to get out without damaging it. So I'm still messing around with the gun a little bit before I pop that plug in. Um, I stripped the old finish off, which was still pretty nice. It was a nice finish. These Hatfield shotguns for $99 are actually kind of shockingly good in that they're a functional firearm and they don't look terrible. The trigger pull is really heavy on them, but you can adjust it easily by taking off that and then just adjusting that main hammer. Um, the finish on the metal is pretty good. Um, they're obviously just cylinder bore shotguns, so they're just, they're not too complicated. It's just single shot break action, 12, 20, and 410 gauge shotguns. It's kind of hard to mess that up. Um, they are Turkish in origin, um, and they're brought in through UTAS and uh, sold under the Hatfield line at Walmart, pretty much exclusively. You can uh, find them a couple of other places, but Walmart's really where you're gonna find these. Uh, but again, I took off the old finish and I refinished it with some True Oil, with some Birchwood Casey uh, True Oil, and I am a believer in this stuff now. I never used it before, but I don't know why I haven't. Uh, it goes on easy, it doesn't smell bad, and it's, it just leads to this gorgeous finish. We'll just see if we can get close up on here. That nice, just sort of glossy, not too shiny. And it really, really brings out, look at that, almost like a tiger stripe pattern in the wood here. It just, God, I just love, love how this thing turned out. So why did I build this? Really, because I was kind of bored and it was cheap, and I aesthetically like this idea. But once I started doing this and I started planning this out, this terrible, terrible idea popped into my head. Let's file that Form 1. Let's pay the $200 tax stamp, and let's cut this thing way, way down. How far down? I don't know. Realistically, I can cut it to about a 10-inch barrel right here and still have that stock or the handguard attachment I could re-weld that somewhere else on the barrel. I could just cut it up here and just leave it at 12 inches and that would just be a very, I mean, a very tidy little package for a 12 gauge. Um, 
I don't know. Still kind of doing some soul searching on that. But this thing's getting a, an F8. We're going to have some fun with this. Um, one last thing that I did not that I forgot to mention. The bead site obviously was located up here. on the And I drilled and tapped it um, to reinstall that bead site. So in case I have any desire to uh, quickly punch myself in the face with this four pound tiny little 12 gauge, uh, I can at least aim while doing it. This is definitely going to be a sort of center mass firing. Maybe we'll do a little one-handed. Um, and what I do want to do is I want to do a little leather work and I want to make a leather hand loop that goes up front to kind of keep my hand in place because obviously this thing you're not going to be throwing a you know, crazy grip or anything on it. It's, it needs leather. Leather, wood, and steel. That's what this needs. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Rush to your nearest Walmart. I feel like every time I make one of these videos, Walmarts nationwide start selling out of them because people like to build these crazy things and the backpack shotguns and stuff like that. But um, yeah, get out there, build your own, have some fun, follow the law because uh, one inch too short on this and it's 10 years in federal prison. So uh, measure twice, cut once, have a good time and stay tuned because this is far from the last you are going to see of this crazy little 12 gauge. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.